So a few people have asked me about the furnace that I'm building, so I thought I'd make a quick video. Uh, we didn't do a very good job of videotaping this when we actually built it, um, so I'm going to real quickly go through what was included in the build. So uh, this is a looks like a 15 gallon uh, container from uh, Lowe's, and it's like 20 bucks. So not too terribly expensive. It's made out of galvanized steel, so it'll weather well uh, outside, although we'll keep this covered when it is outside. Um, as you can tell, the depth here um, is, I don't know, probably a little over six inches from the outside edge to the inside. Um, normally, you don't have to... <clears throat> you don't have to make uh, th it this thick in order to make a refactory furnace. Uh, we did in this case because this is going to be dual use um, as both a refactory furnace for melting uh, metals and also for um, blacksmithing. So we'll be able to load the center chamber with charcoal. Uh, we have a forced air tube, which um, uh, you'll probably see where I tried to remove the bucket. Um, it's in there really good and with the rebar uh, for the crucible stands or the plinth um, it uh, is almost impossible to remove so I'm probably just going to burn it out when I start um, the process of curing this uh, as you can see I just took um, some rebar these um, make sure you get steel rebar and not um, regular iron rebar because iron will melt at a lower temperature steel has a much higher melting temperature so we don't have to worry about our plinth uh, collapsing or bending when it gets really really hot um, you'll see here there's a pipe that goes into the bottom oh and it looks like it is frozen up finally okay so earlier yesterday this thing was still turning um, but you can see right down in there is our our air and over here on the side you can see I cut a hole um, this has to be cast into uh, the uh, refactory uh, mold when you cast it. And I made this. I put a really long pipe in there. I'll get a pair of uh, <clears throat> I'll get a pair of channel locks and twist that, and it'll break free. We want that to be able to move because eventually I want to be able to replace this with a propane uh, burner. Right now, it is just going to be uh, coal or charcoal, regular um, large chunk charcoal or even briquettes will work. Um, the refactory brick um, is extremely soft, or the ex I'm sorry, it's not brick, it's refactory cement. So one of the key elements that you want in a refactory furnace is insulating factor. Well, we've got plenty of insulating factor and there'll be a top that will sit on the top of this that we haven't cast yet and it'll probably be I don't know four inches thick and it'll have a hole in the middle for being able to drop your ingots or your material in while it's nice and hot <clears throat> the key to this is heat dissipation so we want to make sure that the heat does not dissipate away from the center too quickly uh, and this provides a, a large insulating factor and then for blacksmithing it's deep enough that we can set a tool <clears throat> on the edge and have our uh, metal part in the fire. Uh, it could also extend all the way across the, the width. So if you needed to meet, you needed to heat a piece of metal in the middle, you'd have a support and you can imagine coal being piled up here. And the nice thing about having the wide depth is that we can pile our coal up around the outside and kick it in as we're, as we're forging uh, or heating our materials for blacksmithing. Um, so the refactory, uh, material is very soft still. This clay takes a long time. You can see it dents pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to take probably six to 10 days for this to cure. And, uh, we'll also do a curing process. I'm reading mixed re mixed information about this. Some people say once it's hardened to this point, you can go ahead and start the curing process. I'll probably wait a couple of days, let the moisture um, kind of uh, back off a little bit. I drilled some holes in the bottom. I guess that's one thing I should note is you'll notice 
let's see if you can see that. There's a hole right there in the bottom. And what I did was I drilled that hole because if at some point our crucible breaks and you have molten metal in there, you don't want it going into the bottom of the furnace and hardening. So that gives it a place to drain and it'll drain out to the ground into some sand. So that's, uh, that's our current product process. Um, the refractory cement is um, one and a half parts Portland uh, uh, cement, not mortar or concrete, but just pure Portland cement. Uh, one and a half parts of, uh, or excuse me, two parts sand, and then uh, one and a half parts of the perlite, which you definitely want to make sure you use perlite and not vermiculite. I found this out in doing my research. Some people say they're interchangeable. They are not for refactory. Um, perlite is a material that uh, does not retain moisture. It provides air space, typically in agricultural applications. Whereas vermiculite, we'll go over here. Vermiculite, on the other hand, will retain moisture and is much softer. You can actually take this and and it'll break into like powder. So you do not want to use vermiculite. We'll use that for our um, for our uh, garden this this season. So that's not going to waste. And then the fourth component after the per perlite is um, fire clay. Fire clay. Uh, comes in if you buy it from <clears throat> if you buy it from like a ceramic supply store um, it will oftentimes not even be labeled fire clay you'll see something like this on the back um, it comes in different grades uh, I just told the the folks over at the ceramic supply store here in Nashville what I needed and this is um, specifically Hawthorne bond clay um, it's also known as fire clay. Um, it is the most important component of making a refractory furnace because it is designed to harden as the temperatures rise higher and it becomes uh, uh, the, the part that holds everything together and keeps it from cracking. Because with high heat, uh, as you can imagine, you end up with uh, the possibility of materials cracking. So. Anyway, that's a quick video for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the uh, post them in the comments. Thanks a lot.